Wow, thank you for clicking on this thumbnail. I can't wait for you to watch this video. My name is Thomas Brush. I'm the creator of a game called Pinstripe. I'm also working on a game called Once Upon a Coma. Now, believe it or not, the majority of my portfolio, which is about 10 years of work, has been completely solo. From the music, to the design, to the artwork, to the code, I do it all, and I love doing it. Now, full disclosure, my current game that I'm working on, I have a coder doing the development work behind the game, and I'll admit, it's really nice to have him working with me. But I'm not gonna sit here and lie to you and tell you that it's not possible to do it all on your own. So let's get started. Here are five reasons why you can make a game completely alone. Okay, so the first reason why you can make a game completely alone is just look maybe 20 years ago at what they had to do to make games, especially with code. One of my favorite games from childhood is Roller Coaster Tycoon. And I remember being really impressed with that game because it wasn't actually 3D, right? It was 2D sprites like stacked on top of each other and like interweaving and looping together. It was insane. Well, this game was written in assembly, which makes it even crazier. Assembly is extremely strict and difficult to write, and it takes a lot more code to write a simple command. Now flash forward to things like C Sharp and Unity or Unreal, it is so much easier to write script. Unity basically writes the code for you. And if you don't understand how to write something, it's just a simple Google search away. And we'll get to that in the next point. Honestly, when I hear about people complaining about coding now, I think they're forgetting about assembly or just C or Visual Basic. Those languages were much more difficult to learn. Now, you could pretty much have a computer write the code for you. I'll be honest though, it does take time to learn to code, but once you get the general idea of how code works and how it's supposed to be written, you could pretty much get started on making a game immediately. All right, the second reason why you can make an indie game solo is that there are easy to understand resources available at your fingertips all over Google. Okay, if you ever have a problem, just Google it, right? And I think this is kind of a meme now for indie game developers. They've always got Google available at their fingertips to figure out a solution to a problem. Looking back even at like the flash days, resources were so much more technical than they are now. So if I ever needed, had a problem with ActionScript, which is the language that you made flash games in, You'd have to go to Adobe's website and, and look through these highly technical resources that really weren't written for, for people like you and me. But now, when you go to Unity's website and look at the resources, it's almost like someone like you or me wrote those resources. They're written in layman's terms, and sometimes they're even funny. Ultimately, I think gaming software companies like Unity and Unreal are actually competing with one another to be the most dev friendly. It's also really cool to see companies like Unity coming out with their own online courses that you can take to master game development. So I've actually linked that in the description below. Now, the third reason why you can make indie games completely alone is that there are easy to master tools available at your fingertips. There's Logic Pro, there's Photoshop, there's Unity, there's even Blender. And I've actually gotten in trouble in my previous videos for saying that Blender sucks. But the truth is, is now they're coming out with a new version of Blender that is much more user friendly. So you can see that companies across the board are competing with one another to become more user friendly, easier to master. Now I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, okay, Thomas, cool, the tools are available, but what if that's not for me? What if I'm not an artist? What if I'm not a musician? What if I can't do 2D art or 3D art? What if I'm more of a coder? Well, let me say this. Logic Pro has a ton of free stuff available, uh, free loops, free drum loops, free melody loops that you can drag and drop inside of Logic Pro and make a song in like 10 minutes. Now, again, I'll be honest and say that if you're going the shortcut here, you will make a good song, but it's not gonna be great and it probably won't fit perfect with your game. I've said this in previous videos, if you lean into your talents, but so, sort of, but if you lean into your current talent, what's your skill set? And then sort of do the right generic things for other ta skill sets. So write a decent song. I've said this in previous videos. It's important for you to lean into a talent or a skill set that you have. So if you're like a really good programmer, well, make a generic good song, a decent song in Logic Pro, and then make sure you're doing a really good job with the code. Honestly, this can band-aid anything that's not super awesome in your game. But then again, you still made the game alone, and that's pretty cool. Fourth reason why you can make indie games completely solo is pre-made assets. And there's actually a ton of pre-made assets available inside of Unity's Asset Store. Now, a great example of this is The First Tree by David Well. Actually, he just texted me. 
I, I swear, that I'm not even kidding. He just texted me about this. So he said uh, he used a lot of, I swear he's right here. Uh, he said that um, the most important one that he used was Playmaker, uh, which he said he's still lousy at code, third person controller by Opsiv, stylized nature pack, and Gaia, G-A-I-A. -A. Um, he always tried to add his own touch to the assets and make sure it didn't look like an asset flip. Um, I took a bit of the assets here too. So great advice from David, right? He took a lot of assets from Unity's store, but he made sure to make them look personalized for his game. You can do the same thing and you really shouldn't be ashamed of it. This is becoming more and more of a norm. And in fact, I used to be a purist. I wanted to do everything from scratch on my own. But now for my next game, I'm gonna use pre-made assets and I'm not gonna be ashamed of it. Even games like Hollow Knight did this. Hollow Knight used something called 2D Toolkit and I'm gonna be using 2D Toolkit for my next game. And here's one major warning. If you're going to be using pre-made assets, especially if they use code, make sure that the developers of those assets are keeping up with the Unity updates. The last thing you wanna do is download an asset that no one really knows about and that the developer is not keeping up with and making it crucial to your game. Then suddenly when you update Unity, the whole game will break. Now the fifth reason why you can make indie games completely alone is that it's okay to make games that are small. Now this might sound a little weird, but when I first started making games uh, in the Flash era, and that was almost 10 years ago, it was okay to make small games, maybe even 15 to 30 minute long games, because honestly they were free and people were just happy to be playing your game if it was free. So you'd spend four months making a game, you'd release it on Newgrounds or ArmorGames.com, and then you'd get millions of players happy with your game even though it was 30 minutes long. Then like five or six years later, people were releasing more and more releasing indie games on Steam. It became the norm to release games that were a little bit longer, maybe four hours long to six hours long, and charging $20 for these games. Now something I didn't realize is there is kind of a new trend, and I could be wrong here, but a new trend for hour to hour and a half long games coming out on places like Steam and even Nintendo Switch and charging about 10 bucks for these games. Honestly, I think this is a result of AAA companies releasing games that don't really have a storyline, don't have a good campaign, and they focus way too much on making money in the multiplayer environment. YouTube reviewers like Jim Sterling, for example, are more and more starting to compliment games that are small, short, and sweet. And he actually reviewed Pinstripe, and one of the reasons he loved that game is that it was short and it had a good story. So I figured, you know what? I'll play something decent for a change. And these days, to get some decent story-based gameplay that isn't gonna charge you up a wazoo and charge you 10 bucks for a save slot, thank you very much, Metal Gear Survive. Oh yeah, I was too busy laughing at the zombie unicorns to mention that little detail. Uh, we're actually gonna play something good. I think it's our job to make games that are small, meaningful, and sell them for 10 to $15. This is also a really encouraging thing because when you start making games solo, it's really daunting to think about making a three hour project. Those will take years to make, but if you decide that you're gonna make an hour long game, you can actually probably finish it in five months. This is great because honestly, if you're gonna be spending three years on a project, you're probably gonna quit before you finish. Again, my name is Thomas Brush. I make video games for a living and I love what I do. If you like this video, please hit the subscribe button and let me know what you think. Hit the bell if you wanna get notified. Please leave a comment and I'll try and answer as best as I can. If you want to support this channel and what I do, you can head on over to Patreon and support for $5 or more and you'll get your name in the next video. Thanks again, guys. See you later. Bye.